All right, y'all, I want to talk about the scalping strategy that I've been using with very much success using Market Cipher. And I want to show you guys exactly how I am able to take these scalp trades because a lot of people who watch my videos, they watch my live streams, they ask me, Jay, how are you able to take these trades and be profitable? What happens is when, especially when the market is trading sideways, y'all, a lot of times people get sliced up, meaning they, they never really know when to long or short. If they long, the price goes down. If they short, the price goes up, right? They might see prices coming up here. So they take a long, but then boom, price comes down. And then they think, oh, we're going down. So they take a long, zoop, price goes up, get stopped out. They're like, dang, maybe we are going up. So they go long, zoop, price comes down. They're just getting sliced up. And the reason for that is because People have no strategy. People have um, no system, right? They have no procedures, order of operations that they take when they approach these markets. They're not trading based on anything but maybe emotion or maybe just by looking at a certain indicator. Now, don't get me wrong. Indicators have their place. Personally, I use the market cipher indicator. This is the indicator I use to enter all of my trades. But I have a very methodical step-by-step -step approach to scalping uh, in these kind of sideways markets. And that's what I want to show you today in this video. I want to walk you through it. It's going to be an educational video. Now, before I get into it, let me just say, if you think that this is going to come easy for you, think again. This is not something that will come easy. This is something that will take work. It will take study and it will take practice. But this is also something that you absolutely can do. I want to make it abundantly clear that I believe everybody can become a profitable trader if they are willing to put in the work. And today I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to do if you want to scout maybe on a lower time frame. And I'm actually going to be showing you trades that I've taken in real life. And just so you know, I'm not blowing smoke up the old patootie here. Boom. These are trades that I've taken in the past few days or so. These are actually all these trades, right? All eight of these trades, this long, this short, this short, this short, this short, this long, this short, and this short, these are all trades I have taken. And, um, you know, just so you guys know, I'm being serious. I actually have the, you know, in my, in my private Discord, you know, when I post my entries in here, sometimes it will be um, in the public chat, sometimes it will be where I'm exclusively posting my TA. You know, I'll post the entry. This was the long from down there. Um, entered at 32,111. Still in the long, guys. Took profits out along the way up. This trade is over 600% in profit right now. Um, again, this short up here from this wick, that is a trade that I took as well. Posted it in the Discord when I took the trade. That was a really awesome night. I said, I'm short, just like that. Didn't have time to post to take profits or anything, but that was a, also a very nice short from that wick up there. Okay. Entry, 34,300, close, 33,885. Um, and yeah, so all, all, all the rest, right? The, um, the other short that I took, this one from up here, that one I actually did post in the Discord here. Um, you know, I before before the trade happened, I what I usually do in the Discord, guys, is I, I will post trade entries that I'm looking to take. In other words, I always have a plan before I even start trading for the day, I know what trade setups I'm already hoping to take. That way, if price does, you know, one of these five things, I already have three short plans and two long plans. And then it's just a matter of what is price going to do. And I have a plan, regardless of what price does, I have a plan so that I have a trade to take that I've already thought out everything for my stop losses, my, my take profits and all this. I don't have to worry about that in the moment. I already have a plan going in. One of my plans was this trade right here. Um, and yeah, that, that, that turned out pretty well, right? The price came up there and, um, you know, I closed out part of that trade in 217% profits. It went really well. And again, if, if anybody wants to get into this discord, there's a link in the description down here. We have a really great team of traders in here, people posting really awesome TA, uh, in here all the time and good discussions and, uh, good technical analysis, really good traders. There is a, um, Link in the description, patreon.com forward slash Jason Casper. Um, and then, yeah, okay, just real quick to go through, you know, I took the short uh, from right here. 
I took the second short here. I took a long from right down here at about 38.9. Uh, right down here. Well, actually, it was 39.1. That was a really nice long trade. These are all trades I took yesterday. Uh, and then also the short. And then also, I did take another short. Uh, I, I While I was live on YouTube uh, last night, I actually told people I'm in a short. Right, we were trading above it. So, yeah. Looks like we're coming down now from the daily, unable to put in higher high here um, I have uh, also opened a short so I opened a short there and um, the short position that I took is right here okay this this was the short uh, opened it at 40,292 uh, closed it at 39,631 okay so I'm, what I want to do today is I, I want to walk through how I am able to get these trades um, it's again something that everybody I believe everybody can do this. This is not something that is unattainable uh, to you Okay, so I'm gonna be answering a lot of questions during this video too. like what time frame should I use? What leverage should I use? Where should I put my stop-loss? Where should I take profit? I'm gonna get into all of that, but first um, I need to say that if you are going to be scalping like this I usually only like to take scalp trades I prefer to take scalp trades like this if I'm already hedged in a swing trade. What I mean is this, you know, the, in the backdrop of all these trades that I've taken here, right? In the backdrop of all these trades I've taken here, I've been long this whole time from down here, right? I've been in that long that's up over 650% in profit. So even if, and this trade is still open, so even if I take a short from up here and I take a small loss, Right, I still have unrealized profit from this long that I could take out to refund that loss. Right, it could be very simple to do so. Okay, now I know everyone can't do that, but it, it helps if you can get yourself in a nice position and hold it there for a while before you start scalping, because then it will give you a buffer. It will give you a buffer that will allow you to be able to take a loss and not feel it at all. Okay, at all. So. How are we going to be scalping? Okay, we need to follow a market cipher strategy. And these are the four steps, okay? Step number one, you need to wait for price to come to a significant level on your chart. For me personally, I have levels that I have marked on my chart. I will not even think about entering a trade unless price comes to one of those levels. Okay, and if price comes to a level, that's when I decide, okay, I'm contemplating entering a trade here. If we go to my trading discord here, you know, I post levels that I am looking to trade at, right? I every day am posting levels of support and resistance where I'm looking to potentially take a trade if price gets there, right? If price gets to one of these levels, look to take a trade. In fact, yesterday, this was one of the levels I was looking to take a trade from, and I actually did take a long position from here. This is the long position that I took yesterday because I predetermined that if price got to this level, I was going to take a long, right? And so you, you have to have levels marked on your chart where you don't even think about entering a trade unless price comes to those levels. And like I said, it helps if you have a plan of let's say multiple scenarios like I have here multiple trade scenarios both short scenarios and long scenarios so that if price comes to one of those levels you already know what you're gonna do now once price comes to your level okay that's where you are going to then look at market cipher okay just because price comes to a level doesn't mean something is going to happen at that level now we need to look at market cipher and we need to determine is market cipher giving us a bullish signal a bearish signal or a neutral signal. Maybe we don't want to take a trade at all if price comes to our level because things are unclear, right? And we're going to look at market cipher. Step number two is look at the higher time frames. Step number two, look at the lower time frames. Um, step number three is look at a reaction off the level. So again, the, the steps are one, price comes to a level. Two, look at the higher time frames. Three, look at the lower time frames. And four, uh, look for a reaction on that level. And if you do these four things, I guarantee that you will be more successful than somebody who does not do these things. And if you are implementing a good risk management strategy, I guarantee that you will at, at the very least 
break even, right? It was very difficult to lose money trading if you're practicing a good risk management strategy and if you're using some kind of strategy that you've back tested to know has a high win rate. Okay, this is very attainable. Now, if you don't know how to mark levels of support and resistance, if you don't know how to use market cipher, um, if you're new and you're unfamiliar or if you're struggling, check out jasoncaspertrading.com because this, this course will give you the knowledge and the skills you need to become a confident, profitable trader. This is basically everything I wish I knew before I started trading. It took me many years to get confident and profitable if I had only known these things first. If I had only taken the time to learn these things step by step, it would have saved me much time, much money, and much heartache. Assuming you've never even looked at a chart before, this course will go through all the TA you need to know, how to use volume, Fibonacci, how to mark lines of support and resistance, how to use Market Cipher. In extreme detail, we go through Market Cipher. We talk about how to create and test your own strategy that fits your lifestyle, that fits your trading style, and then we go through risk management. In fact, there is a $80 discount right now in the description of this video for a limited time. It's more than 25% off. If you're interested, make sure to take advantage of that discount because it will be going away soon. Uh, this course, I'm always adding new content to it, always updating it. Um, you know, this has really changed the way a lot of people trade. This has changed the way a lot of people trade. You can check out the testimonials. Also, um, if you do want to get into the trading discord, that's patreon.com forward slash Jason Casper, link in the description. Also, if you don't have Market Cipher and you want Market Cipher, there's a link in the description for a 10% discount. Okay, now I've said all those things. I've said all them things. Let us now get into this. Okay, so we went through the steps. Uh, how are we actually going to do that? Okay, remember, step number one is you need to have on your chart levels marked out, right? You need to have levels marked out on your chart. If we don't have, that's called market structure, guys. If you're just looking at a chart and you only have candlesticks, you have no reference point. You have no point of reference from which you are able to enter a trade, right? We need to have a very clear price, a very clear place on the chart that makes us want to enter a trade. And so all the trades that I took here, if I just mark them back on the chart, we will see that at each one of these trades, there was a very clear level of, um, well, I, okay, so I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm long from right here, actually, right? I'm long from down here at about 32, right? That's, that's the trade entry from about 32. Yep, 32. Uh, yep, 32, 111. So I circled the wrong place on my chart. I think I also took I also took a long from here, guys. I also added to that long when CryptoFace um, posted that he was going to go long, and I'm still in the long. You can see that each one of the trades I took here, every single one of them, was from a significant level, right? I had these levels marked on my chart in advance, and I took the trades because we hit those levels. For example, the long that I took down here. Why did I enter the long? It was because price came to a level, right? We came up above this Fibonacci resistance. We came back down, tested it as support, and then I took the long from there. Uh, this short that I took from the wick, that wick right up there, people are like, how the heck did you short the wick? The way I shorted the wick was because the wick came right up into a Fibonacci level of resistance right here. And boom, we wicked right down from the 0.65 fib level. Again, taking the short from up here, this was a daily level of resistance. That was a daily level of resistance. It was a level I was waiting for price to get there before I even thought about entering the trade. Right? Again, um, up here, this short I took here, again, it was because we lost the daily level of resistance. Okay? Um, this short right here, I took it because it was simply a retracement of that initial move down, um, and mar I was getting my confirmations on Market Cipher. But down here, this long right here, I took this long because we came to a Fibonacci level of support and a weekly level, and then shorted here because we came to the daily level, shorted right here because um, it was a it we could tell that it was a retracement from the initial move down. Market Cipher was giving the confirmations, and. We also had, if we just look on our chart right here, this previous high 
was a level of resistance. It was acting as resistance once, twice, three, fourth time we came up above those highs, lost it, took the short right there. This is the short I took on stream yesterday. So you guys can see that, first of all, I'm only entering a trade. Even these scalp trades, I'm only entering if we come to some kind of level, right? Each and every one of these trades is taken from some kind of level of support or resistance. Even the, the swing trade from all the way down here. This is very important. Now, just because we come to a level doesn't necessarily mean you are going to trade. Like, for example, you know, we came to a level right here and we got a rejection. The second time we come to that level, we, we come right through it, right? And you could also say that we came to a support right here and we fell right through it, okay? We come to a resistance right here and we burst right through it, right? It's not all the time that you're going to uh, get a reaction off that level. And that's where using market cipher comes in, right? Now, let's just focus on these uh, five trades right here because, again, this is the area where a lot of people will get sliced up, right? This is the area where people will try and enter trades on a smaller time frame. Like, you know, I'm looking at the six minute right now. We could even go down to the one minute if we want to. And uh, let's just zoom. Well, no, let's, let's, keep it on, let's keep it on the nine minute for simplicity's sake here, guys. Because, um, yeah, let's keep it on the nine minute here. A lot of people get sliced up in this, in this area. But do you see how if you mark in levels on your chart, it gives you a market structure from which you are able to enter and exit trades. Again, if you want to learn how to mark these levels, check out jasoncaspertrading.com. Uh, again, there's an $80 discount in the description. But once price comes to your level, that's where we go to step two. Now we're going to look at the higher time frames. Okay, we're going to look at the higher time frames. Now, if we're scalping, the higher time frames are less important than the lower time frames, but we still want to look at them to determine the overall environment of the market. So, let's start now with um, let's start now with this short, right? This short from the daily level up here. When I took this short, price came to my level. I had an alert that goes off. Remember, it's important that you set alerts. I have a video on how to do it. Um, actually, if you go to my channel, I have a lot of free content on the channel, and um, you know, go to videos. I have a trading view tutorial. Where is that trading view tutorial? Right here. How to use trading view. Uh, this will walk you through, especially if you struggle with belly fat. Okay, this <laughs> video will walk you through everything about how to set alerts and all this kind of stuff. Check it out if you're newer to trading view. So price came to my level. What did I do? I went to the higher time frames. Okay, start with the four hour time frame. Let me zoom out here. The four hour time frame, if we come here and we're looking at the four hour time frame, we can see that as price is coming to my level. In fact, just to clean things up, let me turn off everything except that one level. Okay, just to clean things up for us. And that's the level right there. Boom, okay. And let me turn off these brushes too. Okay, so price is coming up to the level we have marked on the chart. We get an alert. Step number one, price comes to our level. Step number two, we're going to look at the higher time frames. The four hour, what we're going to do is we're going to look at market cipher. And we're going to ask ourselves, on the four hour time frame, does market cipher look like price is going to continue up? Or does market cipher look like price is about to come down? Well, we can see on the four hour market cipher that we've just printed a red dot on a four hour market cipher. If you're unfamiliar with how to use Market Cipher, I, I recommend you learn, but I'm sure you know you probably know. This means we're printing a top, and price either needs to consolidate a little bit and trade sideways, or it needs to come down a little bit, right? And so I've determined for myself on the four hour time frame that it looks like we need to come down. As we're coming to the level of resistance, it looks like we need to come down. Then I go to the two hour time frame. Two hour time frame. What's happening on the two hour time frame? Well, I can see something called a bearish divergence, right? A bearish divergence is where price is making a higher high, momentum is making a lower high. That's a very bearish sign. Not only is the momentum waves coming down, but on market cipher, we see the money flow is also coming down. 
and we also see that the VWAP is coming down. So believe it or not, there's actually three bearish divergences happening at the same time right here as we're coming to our level of resistance. And if somebody doesn't know what a divergence is, a divergence, and I'm sure you've heard people talk about this on YouTube before, a divergence is where price and momentum are doing the opposite thing. If price is putting in a higher high, and then your oscillator is putting in a lower high, that is called a divergence. And if price is getting higher, and momentum is getting lower, money is flow is getting lower. Again, money flow is showing us money leaving the asset. And if the volume weighted average price is also putting in a lower high as price is getting higher, that means there's an imbalance and there needs to be a correction. You hear people talking about there needs to be a correction. Why do they call it a correction? It's because Bitcoin is trading at an overvalued price and momentum is coming down. People are, money is leaving the asset. If money is leaving the asset and price is going up, we know there's an imbalance and there needs to be a correction downwards. And so, you know, if price is coming to your level, and the four hour is showing you, yeah, we've hit a top, it's time to come down. The two hour is showing you a three part divergence, showing there needs to be a correction. Uh, and then we come to the one hour as well, and we just see the most massive bearish divergence. Again, we have the momentum waves coming down, we have the money flow coming down, we have the um, VWAP coming down. While the price is coming up, you know, we know, okay, there, there needs to be a correction right there needs to be a correction and so you know that's that's what we are looking for as we come to these levels okay then after we determine what's happening on the um, on the lower time frame right that's where we come to the uh, I'm sorry once we determine what's happening on the higher time frame then we're gonna go down to the lower time frames like the six minute and see if we see anything significant on the six minute time frame right well where was that? That was that was back kind of far. Okay, so same deal, right? On the six minute time frame, we see price is coming up. We see that momentum is coming down over time. We even see the money flow coming down. And so this is telling us, now we're getting our confirmations now on Market Cipher, that we're gonna get a rejection from here. And that's how you're going to enter the trade. You're going to enter the trade once you have your confirmations on the higher time frames and the lower time frames also agree. Okay, the higher time frames and the lower time frames also agree. And there's multiple ways to enter. You know, one way to enter is simply you wait for the money flow to cross over on the one minute time frame. Or you could just wait for us to reject off that level because you have enough confirmation from those higher time frames. But if you really want it to be safe, you could wait for the, the money flow on Market Cipher B on the one minute to cross from the green into the red, which happens right here. Okay, so you would then enter your trade right here. Come to cross over into the red, stop loss above the last swing high, and you take your profits along the way down. That's for a conservative entry. For a more aggressive entry, you simply just see, you know, even on the one minute time frame, you just see this tiny little bearish divergence here, and you could enter right here, and then have a really tight stop loss, okay? And this is kind of what we're going to do uh, as we're looking at places to trade. Okay, I'm going to go back to the nine minute. Let's take a look at some of the other trades that were entered. Okay, let's take a look at, um, for example, this long that I took down here, right? We're trading sideways. What made me enter this long? Well, again, you know, um, we had down there a FIB level. We also had a weekly level of support. Okay, and now let's just take this this one trade by itself here. I'm going to isolate it because just for example's sake, what would make me want to take a long here, right? Is there any reason I'd want to take a long here? Not just because we've come to a level. Step one, we came to a level. Step two, let's go to our higher time frames and analyze what's happening on the higher time frames. As we're coming down to this level on the higher time frames, market cipher B on the four hour is in fact looking quite bearish. Okay. Now again, we're talking about scalping here. So we can scalp even if the higher time frames are looking bearish. The two hour, as we're coming down to that level, still looking pretty bearish. The one hour, as we're coming down to that level, the one hour is still looking pretty 
bearish, okay? So we need to keep in mind that, you know, this might not be as big of a move as the trade that we took from here. Those big moves, those big swings are always going to be where all the time frames are in agreement, right? The higher time frames and the lower time frames agree. If the higher time frame, if you're looking to take a long, let's say, and the higher time frames are bearish, you can still take that long, but you need to keep in mind it's probably not going to be as powerful of a move as if all the time frames agree. So I'm keeping in in the back of my mind, okay, I'm looking for a scalp trade here. The higher time frames are, are bearish, but let me see what the lower time frames look like. Go down to the 24 minute. On the 24 minute, we can see that we are absolutely printing a um, a a bottom, right? On the 24 minute, we're also printing a bottom. Also on the 24 minute, guys, we have this. We have a hidden bear, uh, bullish divergence. We have a hidden bullish divergence. A hidden bullish divergence is where price is making a higher low and momentum is making a lower low. That is called a hidden bullish divergence. And again, if you want to learn about this in detail, check out jasoncaspertrading.com because this will walk you through all the divergences, how to find them, how to look for them, how to trade them. But as we're coming down to our support, even though the higher time frames are bearish, the lower time frames are showing me I'm starting to print a bottom here. I have a hidden bullish divergence. It's visible on the 30 minute. It's visible um, even on the 45 minute. We can see this hidden bullish divergence. If we take this green dot and connect it to this green dot here, we can see that we've got a hidden bullish divergence there. We come down to the 12 minute and um, Whoa. -oh. Sorry, guys. Didn't mean for that alarm to go off. On the 12 minute right here, we can see a regular bullish divergence. Okay, so on the 24 minute and 30 minute, we saw a hidden bullish divergence. We come down to the 12 minute and we see a regular bullish divergence. Right? A regular bullish divergence. A regular bullish divergence is where price is making a lower low while momentum is making a higher low. Okay, so we can see price put in a lower low while momentum put in a higher low. This is a regular bullish divergence. Um, there's a session in the course that goes over divergences if you're confused. But basically, we looked at the higher we, price came to our level. We're looking for a potential long. The higher time frames bearish. We looked at the 30 minute, the 24 minute. We're looking for divergences. We're looking for things that would tell us to get in a trade here. We do see a hidden bullish divergence on the 30 minute and the 24 minute. We come to the 12 minute. We see a regular old bullish divergence. We come to the six minute. We see a massive bullish divergence forming, right? We see from all the way here, all the way up to here, we have a bullish divergence that is forming. Price is getting lower and lower. Momentum is getting higher and higher. Boom, enter the trade. You could enter even on the one minute if you wanted to. Uh, let me come back to where we entered. Yep, look at this super bullish div on the one minute as well. You know, you have multiple times where you could enter. Honestly, I entered, I think, once we got the money flow crossover. Once we got the money flow crossover on the one minute is when I officially entered that long trade. Uh, let me take a look. Where's my entry? 39196. Where was that? Okay, so it was down here, 39196. So basically, I entered right here. I entered when we um, came up. We, we hit the support, the golden pocket. We got a bounce up. And then I entered when Market Cypher was printing this green dot right here above the zero line, okay? Because um, I saw that we were getting the bounce, and we had the bullish divergences forming, so I entered. A more conservative entry would be to wait for the money flow crossover on the one minute. Of course, you're not going to get as good of an entry there, but it will still get you something. All right. I tend to enter more aggressively. Um, okay. Let's go back to our nine minute. Let's analyze another trade that I took yesterday and why I took the trade. Right. It's oftentimes good to go back and just analyze trades that you've taken and um, Say, why did I enter the trade? How could I have done better? What did I do wrong? If you're analyzing a loss, too, what could I have done better? All right, let's put back on the trades here that I took. Um, okay, yep, yeah, so that was the long from down here. And then, I, you know, we came up, and I took a short from up here. 
I took a short from up here. So I'm just, you know, longing the bottom, shorting the top, basically. But it's not just arbitrarily longing where, you know, again, I have clear levels on a chart marked out where there's a reason I shorted up here. The reason was because, again, we came to a level up here. We came to a level up here, right? So what would make me want to enter a short up here? Well, first of all, price came to the level. Let's uh, circle this again and go through our steps. Price came to our level. Let's um, let's go through our process. Step one, price came to our level. Step two, we'll go to the higher time frames. What's happening on the higher time frames as price is coming to that level? Well, here we are at the level market cipher B again, looking bearish on the four hour, on the two hour, um, looking bearish again on the on the one hour. Um, the one hour. <laughs> looking bullish okay so I took a short here even though the uh, the one hour was looking bullish but the reason why I took the short is because you know I understood the four hour and the two hour were bearish and even though the one hour was bullish you have to average everything together right you can't just look at one time frame you have to look at them all and determine what's going to happen so overall on the higher time frames it seems like we still need to either come down or consolidate right we either need to come down or consolidate there's no way if the four hour is printing a red dot at a resistance that we're going to get higher right there it could happen but it's very unlikely if the four hours printing a red dot at support you know that then there's still room there for some volatility right first for some consolidation because we have to understand when when the four hour prints a red dot like this you know there we are probably going to get a move down but a lot of times we might just trade sideways and consolidate so I, you know, what made me want to take the short there, the higher time frames say we need to either consolidate or come down. When we come back down to the lower time frames, this is really where we're going to be looking to enter our trades. Look at this. We come to the 12-minute time frame. We have a massive bearish divergence forming on the 12-minute time frame where price is um, getting higher and momentum is getting lower, right? Well, maybe it's not a massive divergence but it's still a pretty significant divergence here and so the 12 minutes telling us yep there needs to be a correction the four hours telling us we need to come down or consolidate the 12 minute is showing me that there needs to be a correction here we need to come down a little bit come to the six minute time frame what do we see on the six minute time frame the same exact thing we see that we are as we're coming into our resistance momentum is coming down okay and so again, this is telling us to enter the short right there. And so I did. I entered the short. Um, and it was a it was a pretty nice short. You know, it wasn't the be best short in the world. Um, you know, people in the Discord were noticing the daily is hard to break above. I'm like, yep, I took a scalp from there. And, um, you know, it wasn't the biggest move in the world, but it was still a nice 18% trade, right? And it's simply just by waiting for price to come to a level and then looking at market cipher to determine do we have divergences that are showing us that we're going to have a reaction at that level, right? That's pretty much all I do. That's the that's the scalping strategy that I use. And again, it takes some time to learn these things. It takes some time to learn how to mark levels on a chart. It takes some time to learn how to use market cipher and find those divergences. But if we distill it down and we simplify it, it's simply just knowing how to analyze a chart and knowing how to use market cipher those two things and the third thing that is very important is risk management okay risk management is probably the most important thing when it comes to being profitable trading over time um, let's let's answer some common questions here okay here are some common questions first of all what time frame do I use people ask if you're scalping what time frame should I use the answer is you should use every time frame okay just like what I did here, I'm looking at the 4-hour, the 2-hour, the 1-hour, the 24-minute, the 12-minute, the 6-minute, the 1-minute. You need to be able to identify your environment overall and then find things and average them all together and say, okay, overall, when we're at this level, overall, Market Cipher is telling me we're coming down, so I'm going to take the trade. It's not like you're only going to scalp on the 5-minute. You need to be aware of your environment. Number two, people ask, what leverage should I use? Leverage is a tool, and it's pretty irrelevant. 
the only thing leverage will do is change your liquidation price. If you want to put a thousand contracts on a trade, it doesn't matter if you have 10x leverage or 1x leverage. It really doesn't matter. I know it's difficult for some people, especially coming newer into this, they think leverage is something that makes you earn more money. It's not. It can potentially have you earn more money if you're trading with more money than you actually have. But if you're using leverage to trade within a good risk management strategy, then uh, it's irrelevant. It does not matter. What does matter, especially if you're scalping, is limiting in and out of your trades, right? You want to limit order in and limit order out of your trades because if you're taking small moves where, for example, right here, you know, the price only came down 300 bucks. If I market order in and market order out of this, I'm going to lose money from fees. But if I'm able to take a limit order in, right, so I short right here, right? I had a limit short order somewhere up in here. It got filled. And then along the way down, you place limit orders to take profit out. Um, then you will be able to be profitable doing this, okay? And if you want to learn more about risk management and you want to learn more about leverage, check out the course, jasoncaspertrading.com, because this will really help you get focused when it comes to how to use leverage in a way that is actually going to work for you. And I have a video on my channel called How to Leverage Trade the Smart Way. All right, check it out. How to leverage trade the smart way. How to leverage trade the smart way. It is a 24-minute video. I really think this will help you. Is talk. It goes into some risk management stuff, guys. It goes into some risk management stuff. Okay. Um, the third question a lot of people ask is, what stop loss should I use? Again, the stop loss is 100% determined by your risk management strategy and your entry. Where do I take profit? This is a question people ask. When I'm scalping, I always take profit at levels of support and resistance. So if I enter a short, let's say up here, my first take profit would be right here. My second take profit would be right here because those are the next levels of support. And if I enter a long trade down here, my first take profit would be right here. My second take profit would be right here. My third take profit would be up here because those are the next levels of resistance. That's the way I do my take profits, guys. Um, you know, and I take part of the trade out, and usually I will move my stop loss. Uh, so let's say I, I longed here, which, which I did, right? I longed down here yesterday. No, I'm sorry, I longed down here, right? I longed down here, and these these are my take profits. What I do is, you know, once we get up to this orange line, I'll take 30% out of my trade, and then I'll just move the stop loss to the entry. So that if now we come back down and I get stopped out, which I, I did not, I'm actually, I'm actually still in this long as well. I'm actually still in this long. If I get stopped out, I'm guaranteed to get stopped out with more money in my account than when I started the trade. Right? That, that's also part of risk management. So those are those are the main questions people ask. This is how you are going to like do this and be profitable. Okay. Um, I hope that you found this video helpful. I know, especially if you're newer, it can seem overwhelming. It can seem like a lot. The advice that I would give you is study, analyze the charts, back test the strategy, and um, I guarantee, I guarantee that you will actually be able to do this and do this well if you put in the time and if you put in the work and if you're disciplined right the easy part of trading is learning how to trade anybody can learn how to put lines on a chart and anybody can learn how to use market cipher market cipher is the best trading indicator out there it's such a good visual it it i mean really it's such a good indicator um, but if you're not disciplined in your risk management if you're not disciplined in sticking to your strategy and only entering a trade if all your confirmations are met, that's where you're going to run into trouble if you're not disciplined with your risk and sticking to your strategy. All right, guys, God bless you. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, make sure to like the video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. And I will see y'all in the next video. And um, it turns out that the 10 moving average just crossed over the 50-day moving average. Let's see if we pump, guys.